He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Happy Celebration Sunday. We're so excited to be with you today and look forward to, to just worshiping with you, even though it's online and we're not together in person, we are together in the spirit. And we are so excited for that today. And uh, for all the fun things you're going to have today, even in the afternoon, we're just looking forward to seeing pictures. I posted on our Facebook page, be sure and post your Easter family picture. Last year, we took some wonderful pictures, and so we want to see your pictures today. So just go there to our Facebook page, and be sure and put hashtag, I guess you do that, hashtag um, ALFC Easter 2020, and we want to see those pictures today. Have a blessed day, family. You know, we might be physically distancing right now, but we're not socially distancing, and we're certainly not spiritually distancing. So as we gather this morning to worship the Lord, I encourage you to stand up out of your chairs. Let's worship with all of our hearts, with all of our voice today, because He is risen. Let's celebrate. We believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe He made heaven and earth and you and me created from the hands of the creator we didn't make ourselves no he has made us we believe in jesus christ his only son the one that was spat on the one that was crucified on our behalf the one that our sin put into the grave but our worst could not keep his best from shining through on the third day, he rose out of the grave. On the third day, he invaded the world. On the third day, he was free. On the third day, we are free. Third day changed the world forever. Today can be the third day. Today is the day that God has made. Today is the day Christ will transform our lives. Today, our broken hearts are healed by his hands. Today, he will rescue us from the grave. Rejoice, people of God. Shine in his glorious light. We believe the good news. God is here, and his grace will change the world. This we believe. Good morning and happy Easter to all. Welcome to uh, Church Service with Abundant Life online. Uh, thank you for joining us this Easter Sunday. It is a, it's a privilege to have you with us. Uh, we have a, a wonderful time of, of worship together. Would you join me? Would you stand in your household? Would you get yourself ready to go there in your living room or wherever you're watching right now? And uh, join with me as we pray. Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. God, you are good. Lord, you are alive and risen forevermore. And Jesus, in this day where there is so much that is, is needing your touch, Lord God, we look to you. We look to the Son of God, who is our Lord, our Savior, who is our great King, who is returning soon. We look to you, Lord, and love you and worship you and bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Would you sing with us? Oh, we look to the Son. Set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever, oh, and look to the sun. Oh, we look to the sun. Staring through the dead of night See the gun burst into color at the speed of light Freedom shaking up the atmosphere As the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of the
nation waking up to kingdom come see the hope of heaven shining like the rising sun now forever lifted up from death to life there's no fear in love and no darkness in his endless light in you alone beyond the skies above love reaching out for us the everlasting one jesus our Lord, we thank you that you called us out of darkness and into light. Thank you, Jesus, that you have transplanted us out of a kingdom that was completely lost and hopeless. And Lord, brought us into a hope-filled kingdom of your presence, God. And we give you praise for that right now. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Would you just join with me as we sing about coming out of the grave? I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing the night alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name
Your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. High upon a rocky hill, three crosses scarred the afternoon sky. On the outer crosses of torture and death hung two notorious thieves. Below, Roman soldiers drank and gambled, waiting for death to overtake the poor sufferers suspended above them. It was a public execution, but far more significant than they imagined at the time. Suddenly, the air grew dense and an eerie darkness invaded the scene. As the soldiers gazed about them in superstitious dread, a triumphant cry pierced the gloom. It came from the figure on the center cross, one word in the Greek tongue, Tetelestai. Then he was dead. That shout of victory Christ uttered as he died is usually translated, It is finished. But it had another meaning back then. It was an accounting term. When a bill was paid, it was commonly stamped with the word tetelestai, meaning paid in full. And that is precisely what the death of Christ accomplished. He bore our sins in his own body on that tree, says the Apostle Peter. He himself is the full satisfaction of God's justice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world says the Apostle John. The groaning weight of all the world's sin was laid on Christ at Calvary. He bore it in our place. That's the gospel of grace, that God in love did for us what we could not do for ourselves. 
The Apostle Paul writes, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. John writes in his gospel, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die in the sinner's place that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because Jesus paid it all. To tell us die, paid in full. And so what do we do? We trust him. We look forward to that day when we will stand before his throne, echoing the wonder that he died to save our souls. Yes, we will trust him today and abandon the foolish pursuits that used to consume our lives. We will stop condemning ourselves for past sins. We will surrender the shame we've harbored so, so long. And we will abandon our self-absorbed efforts to make ourselves worthy. We will turn from our sin. We will trust him and we will sing. We will sing and praise the one who paid our debt and raised our lives up from the dead. Yes, we will sing both now and forever. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow.
Jesus. We give you praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, the tomb is empty. We've been talking about it. And we want to share a new song with you today that uh, just really talks about that. And the fact that the tomb is empty means that Jesus is alive. And the fact that Jesus is alive means that you and I can come out of the grave. And the fact that you and I can come out of the grave means that our sin and shame is sin and our shame is gone. Would you join with me? done it's done thank you jesus thank you jesus glory to your name lord glory to your mighty name jesus he's gone the cross is empty as you look off to the right just outside the city stands a gruesome reminder of the events of just a few hours ago do you see it over there silhouetted 
by the fading glow of the pink sky on top of the hill the locals call the skull. Three crosses. The one in the middle, this is the one I want you to see. That's the one that Jesus hung on. Take a close look at it. Look up at the top. Those, those blood stains, they're from the crown of thorns that was crushed into Jesus' skull. The stains on the ends of the crossbar, they came from the nails that were driven into his hands. The main beam, it was soaked in blood, blood from his back, blood that was bled when he, the Roman soldiers beat him with a cat of nine tails. It also has stains from the blood that poured from his side when another Roman soldier ran a spear through his side to see if he was dead. He was. On that cross, Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. God's word tells us again, God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It was on that cross that Jesus Christ offered his perfect, sinless life on behalf of each one of us. And when Jesus breathed his last, he cried out, it is finished. The penalty is paid. And on that cross, that empty cross, it was there that his blood was poured out for our salvation. He was hurriedly placed in a borrowed tomb without the usual care and sorrowful mourning. The stone was rolled into place and sealed by the Roman soldiers, and suddenly everything was quiet. My friends, 2,000 years ago, between the cross and the resurrection, the world slept, the disciples hid, and demons celebrated. But their party was short-lived. In the darkest time in history, suddenly the glory of God appeared. When it seemed all hope was lost, suddenly paradigms shifted. When everything in the natural looked bleak, suddenly a blazing light broke through night. Suddenly the impossible became possible. Every law of physics was broken by the one who created them. Death turned into life. Darkness into light, an ending into a new beginning, because he was gone from the sealed tomb. He is alive. One, two, three, four. Him now, the King of Heaven, Son of God, enthroned above. Heavy cross upon His shoulders, carried for us, carried for us. See Him now, our King surrendered. Final. cry, Father forgive them, spoken for us, spoken for us, when he said it is finished, oh our hope had just begun, the grave has lost its hold, arise, the stone is gone.
death no longer has any victory over us. Praise the Lord.
Throughout the history of all mankind, there has never been a more powerful event than the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He did what no other man or religion could ever do. He conquered death, and he lives still today. Critics have tried hard to find holes in the resurrection story. Skeptics have attempted to prove it didn't happen, yet his power continues to impact and change lives. Historical evidence and scriptural truth continue to remind a lost world that Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. And he's made a huge difference in so many of our lives and in our world because of it. We generally hear more about the resurrection of Jesus around this time of the year when we remember the incredible price he paid on the cross and his victory over death. But the resurrection is not only an Easter story to be thought about once a year. For every believer, whether we recognize it or not, it's a daily truth. It's our lifeline and our hope. The very truth that Jesus rose from the dead constantly reminds us that no matter what we face, no matter what we face today, what we've been through in the past, or what uncertainties are still ahead of us. In all of our tomorrows, Christ alone is our steadfast hope. He conquered death. He rose again victorious. And only he holds the power to make all things new again. He is risen. He breathes new life so that we can live free. You can try to bury power, but it won't stay there. You can try to bury truth, but it's not dead. You can try to bury love, but it cannot be contained. God's not dead, and we're not alone. Jesus lives today, and he's providing a place for us in heaven. His spirit is freely given to every believer to help us in this life. The lives of Christians today demonstrate that the resurrection is still changing people. It changes fear into love, despair into joy. The resurrection changes people from being spiritually dead to being alive to God. It changes guilty condemnation into a celebration of forgiveness and freedom. It changes anxiety into hope. It goes beyond the grave. It can change our sinful hearts so they want to follow the Lord Jesus. And the power of the resurrection is relentlessly killing sin in every true believer. Today, may he fill us fresh with the power and presence of his spirit as we reflect on the difference he has made in our lives through the power and miracle of the resurrection. It's a life of breakthrough, and it's a life of victory. Thank you. 
prosper when the darkness falls it won't be there cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail my God will never fail and I'm gonna see a
breakthrough, victory. Those are two things that the whole world, all of us, are looking for in our lives right now. We're living in these moments in days where shut in, not break out, is what it's all about. Of fear, the, the inkling to have fear, the drive to live in fear, is being challenged by the spirit of the living God who gives us breakthrough and victory. Perhaps today, as you've listened and participated in our time this morning, you've come to a place in your life where you say, I could use some of that victory. I could use some of that, vic- that breakthrough. And my friend, it, I want you to know that it comes through Jesus Christ, as we've sang about and talked about all day today. If you're here watching and you haven't received Jesus Christ, you haven't asked him to come in and bring that peace and that love that only he can bring, to bring the victory and the, and the breakthrough that you need in your life, this is the moment. It's really, God made it pretty simple for us. We don't have to jump through many hoops. We just have to believe in our heart. That what we've sang and talked about today is true. He died for us to forgive our sins. And if we receive it, we confess it with our mouths. We say it with our mouths that Jesus comes in and our whole lives begin to be turned right side up. I'm wondering if you would join me in a prayer. If this is the, the desire of your heart to turn things around in your life, you need hope, you need God's presence, then would you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you that he came and lived and died on a cross for me. I thank you, Lord, that you made a way to take my sin and to forgive it. And that I can live free of guilt and shame and condemnation. I can live with fear gone and faith coming. Lord, I pray right now that you would come into my life, and Lord, that you would make all things new. I receive you just as you have received me. And I pray this in Jesus' name.
Hey, everybody. I sure enjoyed spending time with you celebrating the Lord who is risen. And uh, I just wanted to give you some updates and some information about the coming days and the life of the church online these days. Monday through Friday at 8, uh, you can join me for devotions on all, all of our platforms, and you can have the information right there on your screen. And uh, then also Wednesday night at 7, we have our Bible study, and we're enjoying going through the Word, letting the Holy Spirit speak to us through through those times. And and then, of course, Sunday, every Sunday at 10, we're right here, right where you're watching us right now. So we want to invite you to keep doing that. Also, please know that, uh, like most of the world, we still need to make things happen. And uh, so if you have uh, the opportunity to uh, give, we would appreciate it, of course, to keep everything going uh, during this season. So you can go to alfchollister.org slash give, and there's an opportunity for you to to give online. We appreciate it so, so much. Also, uh, just as a special uh, announcement, uh, we have uh, relationships with uh, several different countries uh, who right now are having a struggle getting food. And so if you would like to make a donation to our missions outreach uh, to help people buy food, you can imagine them not being able to go to work because they're shut in just like we are. And uh, they don't have resources like we do. And so we want to help our brothers and sisters out in a, several countries. And if you would like to give online for that as well, we'd appreciate that so we can give that money right to where it needs to go to bless people. Okay? We have one more thing to do, and uh, I was requested uh, that we do this. This is a tradition. We don't have a whole lot of traditions at Abundant Life, but this is our tradition that we do, and that is we're going to sing the doxology. And so uh, stand up where you're at, and you're going to be the choir right in your home, and we're going to sing the doxology right now, okay? Everybody ready? <clears throat> Clear your throat. <clears throat> you ready? Here we go. Are you ready? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. He is risen!